stylistic, symmetrical, superimposing in the background. And yeah, that's what we were referencing for that. So I really like it. Cool. Okay. You achieved that. Well, thanks. The back is um, same. We did the same, but we yeah. we wanted to look make it look like um. You can have that. There's that, and there's. Oh, no, oh, no, no, no. Of course. Like I've got a hundred of them. Oh, okay. Right. Um. Yeah. So you guys stop talking for one Sorry. second. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Hello there, Dano here for On The Scene. Now I'm at the Barn Club in Geelong where this lovely lady is supporting Stofield. She is less the fierce. Hi. Hey, now, should I call you Anita? Yeah, no? just call me Anita. Just casual? Just keep now, it casual. Before we started filming, what were we eating? Grapes. Now, these grapes right here. Those grapes. And there was the dud grape. I've Where's the, the poor here, little here brunch the grape. grape? Oh, I love the... I'm going to eat... No, I don't want to eat Don't eat him. That. He's very cute. Now I don't put these um, grapes. You can eat them if you like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so how is life treating less than fears? Um, oh my god. Um, good. Good grape? Great grape. On a scale of 1 to 44, what do you rate it? 44 is my favourite number. I had no idea, but I'm just... There you go. <laughs> no, it's good. Um, less than the fears life is good. It's um, picking up. I'm clearing grape out yeah, of my yeah. teeth. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. This is really the first time that something's happened for me in a more consistent way. Yeah. I've sort of had little spurs of things happening, so yeah, it's been great. I've been touring for two months straight, so. This is out. You've got some pretty good support slots lately as well, which is cool. Mm, yeah, I mean, the last one was Nairi, and now I've got Stonefield, which is relatively big for me. I haven't played in a lot of the places that I've been playing in, so I feel quite blessed, actually, at the moment. I'm one of the lucky ones in yeah. Australia, so yeah. You ever played Geelong before? I've never played Geelong. Oh, cool. mm. now, what's something you didn't know about Stonefield that you know now? Something well, even I might not know about Stonefield. Oh my goodness. I mean, they look really similar, don't they? They do, especially Hannah and Tommy. Totally. Yeah. They really look like they're from the same They're not a six-year-old anymore. They're exactly the same. They yeah. totally do. I mean, I was quite shocked when I met them. And they're really talented. Mm. My God. I mean, I'm not saying that I didn't think they would be or anything like that but I definitely underestimated what they were capable of as a band and I mean the sound that they make is is very special and very big as well yeah. so yeah if you can't hear a sound right now it's uh, yeah. Stofield, Stofield sound checking downstairs mm -hmm. um a couple of things you can play a song for us tonight mm -hmm. before you do that one of a couple of things tell me about your children's book idea my children's book idea, oh my god, which one? The one that talks about your sexual experience. Okay. <laughs> I, want, I want an excerpt from this. Um, well, basically when I was probably 20, I started a comic called Crybaby Comics. How old are you now? I'm that. 27. Okay, cool, yeah. Um, yeah that. um, and I started just doing, I guess it was a zine, and it was um, just two-page episodes of relationships that I'd had. Yeah. And uh, I stopped doing that because I ran out of relationships. <laughs> and um, two volumes. <laughs> two volumes. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, and then uh, I sort of started writing this story, and then I ended up doing an exhibition called Mostly Blue Eyes, which was cool. portraits of all of my ex-lovers. And um, was I'm, that weird? Yeah, it was. Yeah. It, but it, it started off as a bit of a joke, and it turned into something quite serious, and it got me. A little bit of attention because I guess it's not maybe a bit unwanted attention maybe mm. um, it's not something that I readily advertise or makes lovers but it's something that I've always been interested in so I'm a children's book illustrator as my job outside of music okay. and and I like the idea of tying um, the two forms together that kind of innocent children's book style and having it about something that's maybe a bit more conceptual and a bit more adult and raunchy even maybe so um yeah I, when i started uh i've started illustrating this book it's gonna i've given myself a couple of years to finish it but it's gonna be a graphic novel just about so you're actually gonna do it oh i've already started it oh, yeah yeah it's um and it's about my romantic failures and my sexual history and you don't mind that being out in the open not at all what would be your biggest sexual failure Oh, I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> you have to buy the book. <laughs> you have to buy the book. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it's the reason why I called myself Less Than the Fierce, which is the I same. I mean, it's the same as what I'm calling my book. I, I think the idea was that I sort of approach things with this sort of like warrior like. You're a fierce lover. 
fierce lover, more like a fierce lever, I think. That's yeah. sort of a better way to put it. And the world that we live in now is quite um, scary to me romantically because it's so sort of disposable in a way. And I, I was living in New York all year and I saw that so clearly there that it's just such... It's like... Um, it's like going out to a restaurant. It's, you know, you go, you eat the food and you leave, and that's it. It's like dating is the same. Yep. You go, you meet up with someone, you leave. Do you, have, do you have like comic book super villain names for all your exes? I should actually. It's a good idea. No, I give them different names, and I and they do describe their characteristics a little bit. But yeah. um, can you give us an example of a couple of names? Um, well, I call one of them Bowie because he was obsessed with David Bowie. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, so things like that. And um, I'm only up to I think when I'm about 21. So I've still got six more years of Chronicle. I thought you were saying 21 relationships. So I was like, that oh, is an effort. No, I'm, actually, I'm not a sexual deviant at all. Like, it's not, I'm not like that. I'm like, in a weird way, I'm quite conservative because I don't, I've not really had a one night stand and I'm a lover. And I, you know, I was talking about this with one you of my... You don't want cooties. No, I don't want cooties, <laughs> basically. Um, and I fall for people and I think that's sort of, when I talk to my friends and family about things, it's one of the things that I'm interested in is people's reactions, especially to human relationships. And for me, I, I notice that myself when I meet someone and I, li I like them or love them, it's sort of, I really bleed into it almost. So You're a hopeless romantic. I'm a hopeless romantic <laughs> in an unconventional way. So it's hard to navigate around yeah. it. Yeah. Also, speaking of hopeless, now this is by no offense at all, I heard you apparently like screwed up your first performance that you ever did in front of the crowd? Oh, dramatically. I mean, and no offence taken, I sort of, when I was 16, I guess, decided I wanted to be like Joni Mitchell and Melanie, and I went and did this horrible open mic performance at a dive bar with lots of bikies and... And I just bombed, like my mum was there and she, as she told me recently that she was just cringing the whole time I was, and I was just ter I was just terrible. And I stopped singing for probably about three years and I kept writing and playing and, and I realised that my voice was different to what I thought it was. It's a strange thing because it's inside of you but sometimes it takes a little bit of time to find actually where it naturally sits and I think I was trying to involve myself in to the kind of world of Missy Higgins and all that sort of classical but simple sort of beautiful voices and my voice is a lot more guttural and gritty yep. in some ways so um, yeah it was Lenny Collins song wasn't it? Huh? It was Lenny Collins song. No, no. Yeah, it was actually a Billie Holiday oh you mean the first song that I yeah. sang yeah it was it, yeah it was a Lenny Collins yeah. song um, it was That's No Way To Say Goodbye Can you sing it good now though? Probably Do it Oh no, I'm not <laughs> gonna do that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, I'll play you a song. I'm sort yeah, of. Yeah, you yeah. You will eventually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Acapella, Australian <laughs> Idol. <laughs> we need to plug this before you start. Oh playing. yes. Yeah. So, uh, EP, self-titled, five tracks. Mm. Got a new single on it. Mm. Got a really cool film clip. We were discussing it before we started mm. filming. Right. It's just men falling from a roof, but you played it in reverse. Yeah. yeah. There's some women in there too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. For all uh, the men pushing it there. Yeah. Um. Yeah, my brother made that clip. He's really? a, yeah, he's a filmmaker, and he. So I said this in an, like an interview recently. Um, I mean, I sort of had gone through all these treatments of the clips, and they weren't gelling with me with the. You song. look like a babe in that clip too, well. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of hair, yeah. um, and um, I sort of wanted something really simple, and I told him I just want something iconic and straightforward, and that emotes the same as the song, and. I think maybe because we know each other so well, he just sort of naturally did it quite, quite innately, and I love it. I'm, I feel disconnected enough from it that I can have an observer's opinion of it. So I'm really, ha I'm really happy with it. Is the next one going to be an album? Um, the next thing that we're doing that you're going to release, yeah. Um, yeah, well, we're releasing an album. There's yep. two more singles coming on. It's so next year or something. Yeah. Next yeah, year, yeah. yeah, mid next year to late next year. Well, around this time is when we're aiming, but. Looks like we'll be recording over the summer, and it's taking really beautiful shape. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. Well, which track are you gonna play today? You're not gonna play how because it sounds shit acoustic. Apparently, yeah. yeah. No, no, it does. It's a <laughs> rock song. I think um, I'll listen. I'll play January. January. Yeah. It's you got, there's there's your options. There's my options. 
I played Colors too many times. I'm going to play January. It's a song about a one night stand, considering we're talking about. Which you've thing. never had before. No, I've not. No, see, I have. Or you had it, in January. Yes, I have had one. There you go. <laughs> there you go. My, I, my secrets are all out on yeah, the yeah. table. Yeah, I have had one actually. Yeah. yeah. So January you're gonna play that. Is that yeah. gonna be one of the singles that's gonna be out? It is actually. We're deciding whether it's the second or the third at the moment, but um, it's quite different. And, and I think um, I I'd like to think that it, lyrically it's it's coming from the most genuine part of me because I mean I, I say this on stage. Someone told me recently that if you can sing a song and feel a little bit uncomfortable that you're revealing too much, then um, you know the song is is something that's going to strike a chord and something that's going to resonate. So um, definitely when I wrote that song, it took me a really long time to feel comfortable showing it to people because it is really wearing your experience on your sleeve. So, I mean, yeah, maybe. I'm thoroughly looking forward to hearing about this one night stand. <laughs> well, that's why I've never had one again, because yeah. I just didn't enjoy it. I think okay. that's sort of, anyway, yeah. You don't talk about it. Hmm? You don't talk about it. No, I sing about it <laughs> instead. <laughs> Stick around, guys. She's going to play it show after this.